Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I have a very interesting case. Well, in my opinion, it is a very interesting case. So months ago, I asked you guys on my Instagram that are you guys interested in knowing more about the murder cases back in the day because I feel like the ones I've read, I feel like the murder cases or like crime cases back in the day were way more gruesome than what we hear about, you know, the cases nowadays. So let's not waste any more time and get into this very interesting case that I have for you guys today. Do leave a comment, do like this video and subscribe to my channel. It will help me in the long run to make more videos for you guys. So this case is about Sada Abe, and Sada Abe is a woman who is known for erotically asphyxiating her lover Ichizo Ishada on May 18, 1936. And then she would go on to cut off her lover's private area and then keep it in her handbag for a few days. Sada Abe's story became a national sensation to the point, you know, writers, movie makers, philosophers, Novelists would write stories, make movies on Sada Abe and her story of killing her lover. So let's get on to Sada Abe's family background. So Sada Abe was born in May 28, 1905 in Japan and she was the seventh out of eight children that her parents, Shigiyoshi and Katsu Abe had. Sada Abe and her family belonged to those middle class map makers family you know those carpets or those japanese mats that you see in most of the japanese home um sadabe's family used to make those sort of mats only four of Sada Abe's siblings were able to you know get to their adulthood out of the seven siblings they were Sada Abe's father was originally from shiba and he was adopted into the Abe family and at the end he was able to inherit this map making, you know, family business. Sada Abe's father was at the age of 52 when Sada was born and at that time her father was described as a very honest and upright man by the police. But some people reportedly said that Sada Abe's father was very self-centered and he had a taste for extravagance. Like On the other hand, Sada Abe's mother, Katsu Abe, was someone who had no moral or legal blemishes on her record. It means she was just a, I guess, a simple lady who did nothing wrong and, you know. Sada Abe's brother was known as a womanizer and when he actually got married, he ran away with his parents' money. On the other hand, Sada Abe's sister was known to have several lovers as well. And in my opinion, I feel like Sada Abe had no, um, you know, you know, you have that, you know, one sibling that is like super nice and, you know, does not break the rules, follow what the parents say. I feel like Sada Abe did not have someone to look up to in her family. So I kind of feel like this is the exact reason why she went on the wrong path because her siblings were paving the wrong way for her to follow. I mean, I could be wrong. What do you think? Because her sister had a lot of lovers, the father sent her sister to a brothel. And at that time, it was not uncommon for parents to send, you know, their children to brothels as punishment, which I'm not questioning the tradition or whatever, because I, I honestly don't know well about the Japanese traditions, but sending their children to <laughs> brothels are just... Uh, but at the end, the father did bring Sada Abe's sister back from whenever he think her punishment was done, I guess. And she did eventually get married and this whole situation of her being punished was, you know, not an issue for her future. So she was, I guess, happily married. Sada Abe was loved a lot by her mother. You know how when you have a younger sibling, they get a lot of love, they get 
whatever they want because you know they're the youngest and they get the most love out of you know the parents so it was the same situation with Sada Abe so whatever she wished or she wanted to do her mother would support her and you know let her do whatever she wanted Sada Abe's mom would also encourage Sada to learn singing and playing the instrument called the shamisen so both these activities at the time were associated with geisha at that time geishas were considered glamorized celebrities so you know when you are young and you look up to you know these pretty celebrities and you know actors nowadays you would you know idolize them or you know have a crush on them sort of thing so it's the same thing for Sada Abe, but she looked up to geishas. After some time, Sada Abe's family started getting some issues with the elder brother and the sister to the point they would, you know, be very pressing on Sada Abe and they would, you know, ask her to stay outside alone. You know, when they're fighting inside, they would just, you know, leave her out there alone. It became so common that soon after Sada Abe eventually became friends with, you know, similar teenagers in the neighborhood who, you know, connected with her with similar issues, you know. At the age of 15, during one of these outings, Sada Abe was raped by one of her acquaintances. Even though she was defended and supported by her parents, Sada Abe became a very difficult teenager and it is very understandable because it is not easy to get over such a huge thing just like rape. It's, just, it's not easy. So it's very understandable why she became this way. She started to become more troublesome. She would, you know, be more irresponsible, more uncontrollable to the point where, I can't even believe I'm saying this, but her parents actually sold her to a geisha house in Yokohama in 1922 and the reason why they sent her or sold her was because they were expecting her to you know find her way in society by doing this so Sada Abe's older sister said that you know she wished to become a geisha so, so this punishment was in her favor sort of thing even though Sada Abe wanted to be a geisha because she, you know, idolized them and was learning, you know, the ways of becoming a geisha, but because her father punished her for her situation, which was completely understandable because, I mean, for God's sake, she was raped and she needed help. Becoming a geisha as a punishment, it was just, it was just, you know, a not a happy situation for her. You know how somebody gives you a gift with a pissed off face? That gift is not fun to open. So the situation was I think the worst way to deal with her condition. In Sada Abe's journey to becoming a geisha was proven to be very frustrating and disappointing because to become a star among the geishas, she was required to have a apprenticeship from childhood with years of, you know, learning of arts and music, which she did not have. So she wanted up to be a low-ranking geisha, which means that she was, you know, her, which means that her duty was just to provide sex. She worked there for five years until she eventually got a STD called syphilis. Um, I might be pronouncing this wrong, so I'll, I'll post the spelling up here somewhere so you can search it up. Because of her condition now, it meant that she had to go under regular examinations, which I believe would also cost money. So Sada Abe decided that she wanted to get into another better paying profession. In early 1930s, Sada Abe began working as a prostitute in Osaka's famous Tobita brothel district, but soon gained the reputation of being a troublemaker. She stole money from her clients, she attempted to leave several brothels, but was, you know, at the end tracked down by the 
well-organized illegal prostitution system. After two years, Saad Abe was successfully able to escape the legal system of being a prostitute. So afterwards, she started to work as a waitress, but the wages of a waitress was not enough and she was not satisfied. So she started working as a illegal prostitute. She then entered the prostitution market in Tokyo and became a mistress for the first time. When her father became seriously ill, Sada Abe nursed him for 10 days until his death. In October 1934, Sada Abe was arrested in a police raid on the unlicensed brothel that she was working at. I'm going to butcher this name, but this guy called Kinusuke a well-known connected friend with the brothel's owner arranged to have the woman released and he was attracted to Sada Abe. So, so this man named Kinosuke, who was attracted to Sada Abe, would eventually go on to make her his mistress. So we're gonna call this guy Kashihara because the name is extremely long and hard for me to pronounce. So Kashihara set up a house for Sada Abe on December 20, 1934, and he provided her with money. So now we're going to go into a very PG-13 um, description by Kashihara. So skip forward if you don't want to listen to uncomfortable descriptions. So this guy Kashihara described that she wasn't satisfied until we did it two, three, or four times. He also went on to describe that to her it was unacceptable if he did not have his hands on her all night long. There was a point where Sada Abe asked Kashahara to leave his wife to marry her and he refused. After Kashahara refused to marry Sada Abe, she asked him if she could keep a lover other than being his mistress which he also refused. After the relationship ended, Kashihara was very angry with Sada Abe and he left these remarks for her. And the remarks were that what she has done makes clear that she is a woman that men should fear. She was also angry with Kashihara that he didn't love her and she said that he treated her like an animal. After her relationship ended with Kashihara, she began to leave the prostitution industry again and she started to work as a maid at a restaurant. She soon became romantically involved with a customer named Goro Omiya. He was a professor and a banker. But on the side, Sadabe knew that the restaurant will not tolerate her to have you know, such relationships with the customers. She decided that she was going to leave her work as a maid and moved back to Tokyo. The customer that Sada Abe was romantically involved with went to Tokyo to meet Sada Abe. Soon after, Goro Omyo found out that Sada Abe had this STD, but he was a very kind gentleman. He didn't, you know, make a fuss out of it. He paid for her to stay at a resort and he also, you know, gave her advice on, you know, how she can start up her own business, how she can become financially independent, you know, so she doesn't have to go from being a prostitute to, you know, changing jobs all the time. You know, he was a nice person who gave her, you know, some good advice. Soon after in Tokyo, Sada Abe began working as a apprentice in a Yoshi Daya on February 1, 1936. And the owner of the establishment was 42 years old, Kichizo Ishada. So the owner of this establishment, who was Kichizo Ishada, was known as a womanizer. Not long after she began working at this Yoshi Daya, Ichizo Ishada began making advances towards Sada Abe. So to Sada Abe, the guy that she was previously romantically involved with, never satisfied Sada Abe's sexual needs. So she gave in to these hints that Ishada was giving. Once Sada Abe gave in to Ishida, they both became sexually involved as well. Now to Sada Abe, Ishida was a guy that she never expected to get. She said that 
his skills and his looks and his attitudes as a lover was just something out of this world. She said that she never met a sexier man than Ishida. Ochizo Izada is married, like most of these men. There was a point when Sada Abe and Ishida separated and Sada Abe, she became very agitated and she began drinking excessively. And the reason for this was because she claimed that with Ishida she knew love for the first time and thought that and the thought that Ishida was back with his wife just made her very jealous. Over a week before this murder happened, Sada Abe went to this act. On May 1936, she attended a play in which Geisha attacked her lover with a large knife. After seeing this, Sada Abe decided that she was going to threaten Ishida with a knife the next morning. On May 11, 1936, she pawned some of her clothes and used the money to buy some sushi and a kitchen knife. Later that night, Sada Abe was meeting Ishida and when she did meet him, and she took out the knife that she got and she did threaten Ishida with the knife just like they did in the play. At first, he was startled and he drew back a little. But when he found out the reason behind it, he was delighted with it all. Now we're going to move on to the incident when this whole situation happened. So Sada Abe and Ishida went to a hotel room where they remained until his death. During this lovemaking time, Sada Abe took out the knife that she had and she put it on Ishida's private part and said that I would make sure that you don't play around with other women. Ishida still not thinking anything of it, he laughed at this. And he actually said to Sada Abe that, you know, you should continue doing this because it increased his pleasure. And she even made him do it too. I mean, this, this whole situation, yeah. On the evening of May 16, 1936, Sada Abe used a obi, obi sash and she used it to tie around Ishida's neck and she used it to, to cut off Ishida's breathing during a orgasm. And they both were still enjoying it. I'm not enjoying this, really this, I'm really not enjoying it. I had a lot of question marks in my head. And this is not even it. They repeated this for two hours. Once Sada Abe stopped strangling, you know, Ishida for two whole hours, she noticed that Ishida's face was distorted and it would not return back to, you know, how his face was. Ishida then took 30 tablets of sedatives to try to ease the pain and when he was dozing off, according to Sada Abe, Ishida started to doze off and he told her to put the cord around his neck and squeeze it again while I am sleeping. And it does not stop here. He says that if you start to strangle me, don't stop because it is so painful afterwards. And at this point, Sada Abe said that she really thought that Ishida was wanting her to kill him. At about 2 a.m. in the morning of May 18, 1936, as Ishida was asleep, Sada Abe wrapped the sash around his neck twice and strangled him to death. After killing Ishida, Sada Abe laid down with Ishida's dead body for a few hours before she took the kitchen knife and severed the private area of Ishida and she wrapped it with some magazine papers. Before Sada Abe left Ishida's body in the hotel room that they were in, she wrote with Ishida's blood Sada and Kichi together and she wrote it down on Ishida's left thigh. And she also carved the character of her name on his left arm. 
So, and before leaving the hotel, she informed the staff to not disturb Ishida in the hotel room. And I guess the obvious reason why she did this was because she wanted to, you know, escape as far as she can before they find Ishida's body in the hotel room. When she was asked why she severed, you know, Ishida's private area and she said it was because she couldn't take his head or body with me and she wanted to take a part that she could, you know, remember him and to her, his private area was the part where she could, you know, properly remember the most vivid memories with him. It's just, it's just, it's... After leaving the hotel, Sada Abe met with Goro Omiya, remember the guy who was a gentleman? She went there to apologize to him, but, you know, Goro Omiya was unaware of the murder she just committed. He assumed that she was apologizing for taking another lover. But she was basically apologizing for the damage that she was going to cause to Goro Omiya in the future because he had a political image. So knowing that he had relationships with this woman who, you know, is going to create a national sensation murder. And as I mentioned before, the story immediately became a national sensation and there was just a frenzy all over, just a search party searching for Sada Abe and people were just going crazy at it. On May 19, 1936, Sada Abe went to a shopping center. She went there and she saw a movie. She stayed in a hotel, a massage. She drank three bottles of beer. After this, she spent the day writing, you know, farewell letters to her friends, to Goro Omiya. She was basically planning to commit suicide. And she even practiced some necrophilia with the items that she was carrying. And the reason why she did this is because she said that she felt very attached to the private area that she was carrying. I don't really want to get into the extreme description because it is extremely PG-13. And if you guys really want to read it, um, this is public information. You can search it online. It is just there. Her love with the things that she was carrying was so much that she was planning to commit suicide while, ho while holding someone else's private area in her hand. Yeah. Uh, I, I kind of feel like the love was not Ishii though. The love was something else. Ugh. I can't believe I'm saying this. It kind of makes me gag. At 4 p.m. in the afternoon, detectives were very suspicious of this name that Sada Abe used to hide her identity. So when she came out of her room, she knew that the police were there to catch her and she just said, don't be so formal. And she told them that she knew that you were searching for Sada Abe and she told them that that's me. You can, you know arrest me. So she basically put her hands up and she said, I'm Sada Abe, I committed this crime, just, you know, arrest me. At first, the police were not convinced that she was Sada Abe and she had to, you know, take out the genitalia that she was carrying to prove that she was her. And the reason why Sada Abe killed Ishida was because she loved him so much and she wanted him all to herself. And because they were not husband and wife, it meant to her that he could, you know, find another woman over her anytime. But honestly, he was already married. Even if he was married with her, he would still find another mistress. Like he was doing it with you while he was married. So, and she and she thought that the only way she could have him all to herself was to kill him. So yeah, it is very common for, you know, murder cases to happen out of jealousy. But what is different in this case is that it was not done out of jealousy, but it was done out of love. 
So yeah, that's... It still doesn't make anything better, you know. Murder is murder, down of jealousy or love. So let's move on to the conviction. Um, there's a lot more to the case, but I tried to, you know, give the whole story into a shorter description. On December 21, 1936, Sada Abe was convicted to second degree murder and mutilation of a corpse. Um, the prosecutors demanded that she would serve 10 years in prison, but she was sentenced to 6 years in prison. So Sada Abe served around 6 years in prison for this murder. So this is the end of this murder case. Let me know in the comment section down below what you think of this case. It was definitely a hard word to do because there's a lot of PG-13 um, descriptions that I'm afraid to disclose here. But if you guys have any more information on this case, do leave it down in the comment section below or give me some more ideas or cases to do in the future. So yeah, remember to like, subscribe and leave a comment down below.